Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here, and we're going into the weekend. It's beautiful weather now, but that's not going to be the case by Sunday and Monday. We've got a major low pressure system, essentially a nor'easter, that's heading our way for Sunday or Monday. The confidence in this is starting to grow. Still some uncertainty on the track, but it's going to be a pretty interesting setup. So what's going on and what we're going to be watching over the next that's like 24, 36 hours, low pressure is going to develop there. The energy is right here. It's going to dive down here. We're going to have a thing called cyclogenesis. That's just low pressure developing. This is going to crank up, move across Florida, and then up into the Carolinas, somewhere maybe on the coast, off the coast, or inland. That's the question, you know. And it's the uncertainty part is always difficult because if the low forms here, here, or here, that dictates completely different tracks, right? So that's why there's still some uncertainty. It's not that. You know, hey, we don't know, we're flipping a coin. It's not a flipping a coin because we actually know that low pressure is going to form here. So that's why there's some uncertainty. So once it forms, we'll have a better idea. But we're starting to see some of the hazards come into, you know, clearer picture. I'm going to turn off the satellite imagery because I got to turn on the severe weather outlook first. And you can see by Saturday, we've already got a low risk for severe weather in Florida. Now, why is that? Well, this is going to be a pretty strong low pressure system. And it's going to pull moisture up ahead of it and warm humid air. So there's potentially some strong storms there. Don't think we'll see severe weather in the Carolinas yet, but it's not off the table. The bigger issue, I think, for us is going to be the risk for heavy rain and wind. In fact, we could see some really, really heavy rain. Um, if I put the day one, what we call excessive rainfall outlooks on, we'll do day two. Um, I'll do day three. <clears throat> and you can see Florida is kind of all in the, in the medium, which is you know, the yellow, and then the green is low. But as we go into day four, and I can't display here, I'll show you here in a second that all of the Carolinas are now in the day four. So we jump ahead to day four. We'll show you a different product here. It kind of shows you the same thing. But you can see all of the Carolinas in the low or what we call moderate risk. Um, that's a 15% chance of flash flooding. So the excessive rainfall outlook on day four now has all of us in that risk for flash flooding. And it's because that low pressure that's developing and heading our way. So let's take a look at what could happen as this develops. All right, so let's dive into this. Here's the future cast. This is the GFS model, which has been the most consistent, by the way, the European model coming into line. So they're actually very similar. There's just subtle differences in timing and track. Not enough that we're going to miss completely. It's just a matter of the intensity of those impacts. So we'll go through today. This is obviously the 14th. We'll go into Friday. Um, we'll get into Friday evening. Not a lot going on. Um, the low pressure looks to be cranking up over the Gulf of Mexico. We go into basically early Saturday morning. I'll stop this at 10 a.m. This is when Florida starts to see the worst weather. So I had some questions about traveling in Florida. Saturday's bad too down there. Um, it's not bad up here in the Carolinas. We're going to be dry during the day. Um, it's really Saturday night. I'm going to go into Saturday night, 7 p.m. Low pressure there over the Big Bend area. So you can see why there's severe weather risk in uh, in Florida because you got low pressure here. The warm front, if there is one, is right here. So you've got some bay. This sector here is going to be probably severe weather, but look at that heavy rain down on the northwest side. The winds start to pick up Saturday night. We could even see some rain after sunset, but it's really Sunday morning. This is one o'clock in the morning. I mean, there's the low. It, essentially, you got to treat this like a tropical storm. That's the kind of impact. So a much colder version of a tropical storm. We're not looking at really warm conditions. Um, for this time of year, yeah, maybe mild, but uh, certainly nothing that would you know, be crazy. The severe weather risk would only be off to the east side in this band. So that's why right now I'm not overly concerned unless this thing tracks really far west. But it's hugging the coast here. This is uh, 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. And so Panthers fans, uh, it's a rough season. Boy, that game is going to be brutal because what's happening here, you've got strong winds. See all those isobars, those lines? The tighter those are together, that's stronger wind. Low pressure right there. So uh, northeast winds, that's why it's called the nor'easter. Remember, that's the reason it's a name. People often think, oh, it's in the southeast. It's you know, It has nothing to do with what part of the country it is. It has to do with the winds that it produces. So northeast winds on the coast and inland, that's what, call, what gets the name the nor'easter. So you see those strong winds pushing water and obviously some heavy rain in. Just a windy, raw day. This is 4 p.m. We go into Sunday night. Um, and you can see the low lifting to the north, drier air trying to filter in. So hopefully on Monday, things will slow down a little bit, though it's still going to be really windy on the backside of this as this moves up the east coast. And that's when we could see a little bit of snow in the mountains. This is not going to be a significant snowmaker, it looks like right now, unless there's a big surge of moisture on the backside. But it could end as some snow on Monday night into Tuesday. So let's go back and look at that one more time. I mean, that that is going to be a monster system rolling up the coast. And we're talking significant 
rainfall for our area, which we need. We just don't like getting it all in one day like we have recently. <laughs> Could we just stretch it out a little bit? Um, but we're making up for lost time. This is definitely going to put another huge dent in the drought. We knocked a big chunk of it off last week with the rain. This will do another big one. Um, the wind and rain is probably the biggest issues for us. So let's take a look at uh, some of those impacts. So first things first, we'll look at the uh, the rainfall outlook. And you can see generally a couple inches of rain in there. So maybe one to two inches for our area, maybe as high as three with heavier amounts to the east. But obviously that all depends on actually where the actual low goes. So that's going to be a big part of, of how this works. So we got to wait and see, you know, where this low is going to develop. And that will make a big impact on basically where we're going to see uh, the heaviest rainfall. But I do think it's going to be a, a pretty good soaker because a lot of this is going to happen over a very, very short period of time. When you look at these totals, I mean, those are impressive. And on the coast, you see those higher totals. So let's talk about the wind briefly. So we'll come back here to look at the wind speeds. Now, these are the 10 meter wind gusts, basically at the surface. So you see the low pressure. I mean, there's some strong winds in there. Just to give you an idea what these winds are. I mean, over the water, there's some 50 mile an hour wind gusts, it's not sustained, gust. okay? Uh, up in our area, you can see these gusts 20 to 30 miles per hour. But as we get, you know, into areas closer to Sunday, you know, this is when you could see the gust potential over 30 to 40 miles per hour. And then offshore, I mean, that's tropical storm force winds, almost hurricane force offshore, definitely a gale center. So just to give you an idea, um, let's go into the middle of the afternoon. I think the worst winds will probably be somewhere in here probably right here. So this is early Sunday, just to give you a, a, some perspective on some of the wind speeds. Um, it, it's going to be howling, folks. It's, that's why I said you almost have to treat this like a landfalling tropical storm, even though technically, technically it isn't. So um, that, that is going to be a doozy of a storm. Um, again, kind of a nor typical nor'easter with a lot of rain and wind. So our biggest impacts in the Western Carolinas, heavy rain, strong winds and because of that combination probably some scattered power outages it's impossible to forecast specific outages but i will tell you i've seen this a bazillion times there will be scattered power outages where and for how long and severity that's really impossible until the storm starts to develop but i would start seriously thinking on sunday monday maybe tuesday those three days you might want to think in the back of your mind hey we might lose power for a couple hours maybe a day um, you get that much wind and rain over such a big area um, you're likely going to see some scattered power outages. So I'll have updates. I'll do vlogs starting today. We'll do probably one tonight or more, most definitely one on Friday and Saturday morning to get you ready for this storm.